welcome to week two of finding my ikigai slash week two of having quit my job and now doing freelance stuff. So I'm currently editing video one, um, which I'm realizing is far too long than I think is necessary. And I'm going to do much better at just like keeping it short and sweet, giving you guys updates on all the different side projects as well as how freelance writing is going. I do think it's quite interesting if anyone out there is also freelancing or considering going freelance to see you know the struggle and to to see how it does pay off I like I'm already establishing really good connections I'm already getting really exciting meetings with people and like dream clients you know um, and nothing is set in stone yet but it's already promising and I can already see the sprouts of the seeds that I'm planting um, and it's only week two so if it keeps up like this and if I keep getting uh, intros with really great people that I would love to work with it should go well um, but I think it's really cool to just like be super transparent about um, the struggle because I'm not making any money at this moment um, and so that is scary but at the same time like if you invest in yourself and if you t if you're willing to take big risks I do really believe that there can be big rewards for it and if I were to stay at this safe you know in-house full-time content writing job um, there, there's only so much money you can make in a position like that but if you work for yourself and you establish a brand and market yourself which I'm really hating having to do but I'm realizing is super necessary and haven't really started doing that yet but I'm gonna have to but if you can do all of those things I think the payoff can be tremendous I'm starting to see just based off of the pure like initial chats that I'm having um, where I feel, I feel quite validated that this is going to be successful, but that's also super naive, super optimistic Emma talking. So it's nearly the end of the day today. All I've really been doing is editing my video from last week and it's taking ages because I'm using Adobe Premiere Elements, <laughs> which uh, I bought in 2020 because I'm in, I wanted to start YouTube back then as well and I made a couple of videos about looking for housing in Amsterdam and uh, I needed a video editing tool and I was scoping all the different options and while I would love to use Premiere Pro, I think the only way you can use it is if you pay the monthly subscription, but over time that's so expensive. And Elements, however, is just a one-time purchase. I think it was like a hundred bucks, but one time. So if it is even a decent, to, I don't need anything super fancy. I just need like simple cuts, simple transitions, simple, you know, uh, graphics and whatnot just the bare minimum. So I was like, Elements is perfect. Except that for some reason, now it's going so slow and I'll make like two or three changes and then it stops working. And so that's, that's why it's taking forever. So I'm definitely gonna have to consider getting a new tool, um, probably even a new laptop. I've been using the laptop that I have now since my sophomore year of college. So six years ago, seven, seven years ago. <laughs> and um it still runs that's the thing like that's why i can't justify getting a new laptop because it runs it just is making loud noises <laughs> it makes the loud fan noise constantly um and it also has like no storage um <laughs> But other than that, it runs. So like, why should I have to pay another, what, $1,500 for a new laptop? So I'm gonna have to really think about it because it would save me a lot of pain, but I don't really have that money to spend right now. I kind of have to also save and be smart about my savings. So, tricky, tricky. I'm nearly finished with editing last week's video and I'm really eager to put that out there because I do think that YouTube, while is just a way to kind of document finding my ikigai, I do think that it's also a path in which it could actually be my ikigai because I look at the YouTubers that I love and it really spans like the types of 
channels that I subscribe to. So there's like vloggers from Japan. I love Sunday Love. Um, I think she's even from California, like close to the area where I grew up and now she's living in Japan and I absolutely adore her. I love uh, Kara and Nate. They're like a travel couple. They've been spending the last, I don't know, seven years or so just traveling the world nonstop. I absolutely adore them and their channel. Um, I watch, you know, drag queens like Trixie Mattel and Katya doing interviews and reacting to shows. And I find YouTube to be such a beautiful platform where people can either explore those very niche interests and find a like-minded community or just be themselves and vlog their normal lives. And I'm not trying to say that Seb and I leave, <laughs> lead this particularly interesting life, but if somehow you know putting these videos out there just finding my ikigai but along the way people just find our lives relatable they subscribe to our channel just to like see how we're doing um and how my progress is going with let's say my singing lessons or um if they're an aspiring freelance writer and they want to see what works for me so that they can also take some notes that would be epic so if youtube could work out as a means to also make money that could also be my ikigai of course like so many people start with a channel with a podcast i also had a podcast um and i'll probably talk a little bit more about that too but few people really stick with it and I had started, for example, the podcast because I really wanted a creative outlet. I really wanted a means to just share more about myself and tell other people's stories as well. YouTube wasn't an option because it just takes up way too much time, like filming and editing. Like I would need a couple of full days just to work on it, um, which I don't have when, you, when I'm working full time. But now that I'm freelance, I definitely do have that time, so that's why I've I've pivoted back to YouTube um, and podcasting like I, I started it I put out eight episodes I'd recorded a few more but never sat down to edit them and I was just feeling like uninspired with the podcast and I was feeling like I'm not consistent enough and who's gonna keep listening if the episodes are so sporadic and at this point it's been like I don't know six months since the last episode not good and um, so that's why, let's see if YouTube works. And now that I'm freelance, I have no more excuses for it not to work. So really, really hoping, really curious to see what comes out of it.
てみる。<笑>今日の動画は以上です。I'm not gonna be able to keep going like that for more than like two more months, right? So then I would really have to seriously consider taking on another full time job or,、um, like I mentioned in the last video, nannying or waitressing or something.、Um, but I was hoping so badly to just get some clients, even in the first month, just some that help pay some of the bills、um, so that I can keep trying. And it's looking like that's g o i n g to be the case. And some of these projects like, are so epic, and I would be really happy to dedicate a lot of hard work towards them.、Um, even if it's not my ikigai, it's still really a cool opportunity, a cool learning opportunity.、Um, so I already mentioned in the last video the Space Communications Agency. I'm meeting with them next week, so I still have a few more days to prepare for that. Tomorrow, however, I have three meetings, each with three different、uh, people slash companies. And only booked them yesterday. So, yesterday I was just like elated with how things were going.、Um, one opportunity, probably the cooler of the three,、uh, is that there's this guy who works in VC.、Um, he's been in VC for the last 20 years. He also hosts a podcast about、uh, startup exits. He wants to write a book about his experience,、um, all things investing, all things startup,、uh, and entrepreneurship. And he wants someone to write the book for him. And who knows why he decided to respond to my little LinkedIn DM when I'm sure he got tons of offers. I don't know why or what he saw in my profile.、Uh, well, I do, like I do to an extent. I have somewhat of relevant experience in, in the sense that I've written for executives of tech companies.、Um, I've ghostwritten for them. And so you really, that's like a very special type of writing where you really have to write on behalf of a thought leader.、Um, and, you know, I've written about entrepreneurship and that whole journey. So it's not completely. Irrelevant, but I've <laughs> not written a book, nothing like it. I'm really curious to see what the project really entails. We'll meet tomorrow to discuss like the timeline and the costs and whatnot.、Um, and if he's convinced of me, like I would happily, happily take on the challenge. And <laughs> I'm like 80% confident I would help him write a pretty good book, but it's so hard to say until you really start doing it. So to be able to say that I wrote a book. Is something worthwhile, I think, even if I hate writing at the end of it.、Um, so, yeah, that's one. I have a meeting with a Web3 gaming company.、Um, so, they, it's like a gaming platform where you just like explore the realm and you discover like opportunities to. Cash in along the way. And they're looking just for someone to help them write a few press releases to announce the launch of their company,、uh, which is exactly what I've been doing、uh, in the past. So, I should be a pretty good fit for them. And then there's another guy who also writes for VCs,、um, for thought leaders. And he, I guess, needs some help with a project that he's working on. So, he's looking for an additional writer to come on board. And so, I have three meetings tomorrow. and It's just, it's promising. It's really promising. You know, I was getting freaked out because when I, when I resigned from my company,、um, I was looking on LinkedIn, and maybe it's like a, a bias of when, when you're looking out for something, you notice it more. And I was looking out for all things freelance writing, and I was noticing so many posts about how, yeah, good luck, freelancers. It's a really, like, it's not the market for you right now. It's not a good time to be a freelance writer. And、uh, companies are laying off their content teams, meaning they don't have the resources for content, period, right now, you know?、Uh, things like that. I was just seeing so many negative posts back to back, and I was freaking out like, what have I just done? I've just resigned. Like, I should have kept my job. That being said, It's worth trying, anyways, and I would be mad at myself if I just kept working at a job I don't like、um, for more years to come. What, I'll always have wondered, like, what if I gave this a fair shot? What if I tried something new? So let's keep going. <laughs> Finally, it's 
warm. <laughs> So I've decided to start a book that Seb got for me a while back. It's called Pathless Path. And while I normally struggle with uh, nonfiction, just because I just even, it could be the best nonfiction writer out there, but um, since a child, I've been more gravitated towards, uh, you know, the more adventurous uh, types of books. But this author, Paul Millard, seems to have a very similar background as I, where it sounds like he was a writer, freelance writer, uh, and that he quit his high paying job working with CEOs uh, in order to pursue a pathless path, that's the title of the book, and explore projects that he was interested in and set his own path and define his own career. Um, and so sounds extremely relevant for what I'm doing right now, so I'll let you know how it goes. You know, it's really interesting. Today I've been filming myself here and there and I keep pausing at every other word practically and needing to start over my sentence or my thought. Compared to last week where I would just turn on the camera and flow supernaturally, tell my story, almost forget that the camera's even there, just like I'm talking to somebody, right? Um, yeah, today I'm finding it super difficult to just complete a full thought and I don't know where it's coming from uh, other than maybe like you mess up a couple times and then your head is just in the wrong headspace. I think I'm also adding pressure on myself because I don't like how long the last video was and how much I was talking and I felt like I could have said a, a lot of things more succinctly. So this time I'm trying to do that but as a result I'm catching myself uh, saying things not how I want to and then I need to start over and over and over again and then you're just in the wrong headspace and you can't just be natural so I need to find a balance between being natural being myself but also keeping it efficient for you guys. 